Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be creating the perfect smash ultimate character we're going to be taking every single move in the game looking at the entire cast and picking which one is the best and i want to make this very very clear the goal of this video is not to make a cognitive character we just want to look at these moves in a vacuum and put them all on one so if all of our moves are kill moves for example we don't have any combo moves in practice that's not a very good character but this is in a vacuum it doesn't matter how they go together we're just putting them all on one i think that's really important to establish and let's get right into it and there's a couple moves in this game where they're just clearly the best one. And in that case scenario, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail, but when it's hotly contested, I am going to talk about all of the honorable mentions. And the first move that we are going to start with is the neutral layer. And my pick for the best neutral layer is going to go to Mr. Game & Watch. Not only is the hitbox on that move ridiculously large, but it also combos into itself. Now, the honorable mentions for this are going to be Politana Nair and Rob Nair. Politana Nair is kind of Game & Watch Nair, but the hitbox on it isn't as good and it sends more to the right and left more so than up and i do value move sending up more than right and left just because it doesn't really matter where you are on the stage you're going to be able to get the same value out of it every single time you're also able to combo into the platforms with it and rob nair a wise man once said i parry rob nair for positioning the move is ridiculous it has a really nice stage joint it's a combo move it becomes a kill move at certain percents as well but it doesn't get the same amount of combo ability that you do from the game of watch nair and once again the hitbox on game of watch nair is just ridiculous the fact that the fish themselves are a hitbox is aside from the just the fishbowl is pretty insane and i think it's the best name in the game pretty clearly moving on to back airs and the best back air in the game is going to go to cloud this move is honestly better than half of the cast and it's one of the big reasons of why cloud is such a strong character because it just makes him have incredible walling it is one of the hardest moves in the entire game to get out of the corner versus because the frame data on it is pretty solid it's a massive hitbox it kills as well it chunks your shield it's an amazing edge guarding tool this move honestly does it all it pretty much wins neutral for you some honorable mentions are going to go to donkey kong back air another back air that's pretty much just a massive sword with the sour spot coming into the sweet spot as well which is pretty nice Politana back air is really good for the intangibility i also personally like backers like pikachu and game watch just because the edge guarding potential is so strong but i think cloud back air is pretty clearly the best back air in the game it just creates this wall that is almost impossible to get past Next up is going to be forward air, and the best forward air in the game is going to go to Bowser. This move is basically an up air, a forward air, and a down air at the exact same time. It just covers so much space. It's actually unbelievable. It's disjointed, and of course, it's on Bowser. It is going to be a kill move. Some honorable mentions are going to go to Corrin forward air. It's extremely disjointed and combos into itself, as well as Shulk forward air, which is a lot more disjointed than Bowser forward air, and it is pretty similar, but I ended up going with Bowser forward air just because the kill potential on this move is ridiculous. And this move kills in neutral. In my opinion, it's the best edge guarding forward air in the entire game, even though moves like Min Min forward air and Sonic forward air are very good for edge guarding as well. It just creates such a wall that is almost impossible to get around, and it also kills a neutral, which is pretty nice. Next up is down air, and the best down air of the game is very clearly Anvil. It is just so strong. It kills you at like 80%, and you can do footstool into Anvil, which is ridiculous. You can also just send it down and then jump off of it, so you're just sending a projectile so your opponents really can't pressure you in the advantage state. But I'm not going to be including it for this list just because I don't know how it would work in a vacuum since most characters aren't going to have access to mining. And by most, I mean, you know, every character aside from Steve. So just know Steve Downer is the best downer in the game, but I'm not including it for this list. And instead, I'm going to be giving the best downer in the game to Pyra. This move is one of the strongest spikes. The hitbox on it is absurdly large. It hits through platforms. And it's also an amazing combo tool if you aren't hitting it off stage. The sour spot for it is going to start killing pretty early on as well. The only real bad part of the move is that it's slow but for that hitbox it, it better be slow next up is going to be up air and this is the first move in the entire game where i think it is very clear who the best up air goes to and that is going to be mr game watch this move is ridiculous it's the reason that game watch is sitting at that top three status he currently holds today because it gives him the best advantage state in the entire game this move has pretty much zero end lag it combos into itself at certain percents and when it doesn't combo to itself it gives you the best advantage state because the move takes so long to actually finish its hurt box animation so the opponent is stuck up in the air getting pushed up there so you get to reset back to the ground you get to see which way they're going you get to up air again and it's just impossible to get down versus now i will acknowledge that not all characters would be able to get the utilization out of game watch up air because it does require at least decent mobility to track your opponent but game watch is by no means a fast character and he has no problem doing so i do want to give an honorable mention to corn up air just because that move is also ridiculous but game watch up air is very clearly the best one of the game 
Next up is going to be Neutral B, and this was actually the toughest one for me to choose by a pretty significant margin, because you have moves like Joker Gun, you have Snake Grenade, you have Steve Block, which are all incredible, but I ultimately went with Shulk Neutral Special, because I think in a vacuum, a majority of characters would be able to get more utilization out of this than they would be able to get out of a move like Block, out of a move like Gun, because every single character just massively benefits from doing more damage or being faster or having shield art so they don't get combos same thing with smash art you're killing significantly earlier your recovery is better from jump art as well as your advantage state every aspect of every character is just buff without monado arts shulk is like a mid-tier character at best and while c block definitely has arguments as the second best same thing with joker gun as well i don't think a majority of characters would be able to get the value out of c block that they're able to get out of monado arts and it's the exact same thing for joker gun movement it's a really strong tool in in the neutral but the move by itself isn't as good without the fact of joker being as nimble as he is and in a vacuum a uh, shulk neutral special is just like amazing on everyone Next up is going to be side B, and the best side B in the game is going to go to Duck Hunt. Now, most people are probably surprised by this, but if you actually take a look at the move, it is pretty ridiculous. Not only is it a projectile where you can mix up the timing of the second hitbox, but it's also a move that combos into itself, and then anything that you could really imagine. You could Duck Hunt side B someone from one side of the stage, chain them across, and then end it with a Pyro Down or offstage, and that is a very realistic scenario to happen. You can also just side B someone once, and then do any aerial of your choosing. If you have like a mario up air or something getting side beat is pretty much a death wish some honorable mentions are going to be minecart because you know duh you're also going to have sonic side b which gives you stage control in a matter of seconds less than a matter of seconds as well as being a combo and kill confirm move and also snake side b because it allows you to safely edge guard from the center stage or really wherever you want and it kills absurdly early on even though you can hit it you can also just deactivate the hitbox so it hits them with the weaker hit anyway and just do it over and over again but duck and side b just gives you so much versatility it makes your combo game really strong you have this projectile that just kills you and literally anywhere hits it's just ridiculous editing fruit block i also wanted to give an honorable mention to bayo side b i don't think most characters would be able to get as much use out of bayo side b as she is able to but the move is still undeniably strong it makes you have a massive burst range it's a combo to it pretty much nullifies the ledge state of the game and it's just really good Next up is going to be down B, and the best down B in the game is pretty clearly hero down B, but it's going to be another situation where I am excluding the move just because I don't really know how mana would work in a vacuum, but this move is ridiculous. Not only do you get access to zoom off stage, so you have a free recovery sometimes, you have the slashes, you have the amazing spells, and you have the buffs, like it is insane, but it doesn't count, so the actual best down B in the game is going to go to Rob. Now, there was also contentions for Peach and Diddy Kong being in this. The item characters just have really strong down Bs because you're able to do so much with those items but rob gyro is kind of like the middleman maybe you think peach turnip is the best at comboing even though i do think rob's is the best at comboing and then you have diddy kongs for controlling the stage but rob's does both you can put it on the ground to control certain parts of the stage it combos into itself as well as with pretty much anything you like it falls at a really slow angle it hits super far away and also you can snipe people off stage with the initial use of the down b and i think it's pretty clearly the best projectile in the game and by projectile i mean item of course and the final special is gonna be the up B, and there's only two moves that were even considered for this up B, and the first one is the honorable mention, which is Pikachu up B. This move makes it so your burst range is the entire stage, you have the best recovery tool in the entire game because you have so much variety on it, and if your character is able to get under the stage, then you get to pick which ledge you want to go to, and the mix-up in the neutral just makes it so you're constantly worried that someone could just throw out an up B, and if the up B hits, great, I get to combo B. If it doesn't hit, I'll just go to the other side of the stage with no risk attached to it, but the best up B in the game game is going to be game watch up you have to go with it because this move literally does it all and that's not even an exaggeration this is a combo tool this is an edge guarding tool it can be a killing tool at certain percents off stage and it's also the best get off me tool in the entire game you cannot touch a character shield if they have access to game watch up because they're just going to rip that trigger immediately and you're going to be in disadvantage and then they can act out of it and combo you afterwards like it is ridiculous Next up are the jabs, and the best jab in the game is going to go to Krom. And the reason that I chose Krom over Roy is because I can do a max space Krom jab and still be able to get the confirm, whereas with Roy, it really doesn't work out like that. And it makes the shield pressure of this move just incredibly, because I can just kind of mash jab on your shield. And if you don't have a really good up out of shield or just option out of shield, you're kind of just screwed. You have to disengage. And if it shield pokes you, you're just going to die, because I have this amazing confirm move that acts as both a kill confirm and a combo tool. It's amazing just to kind of throw out in the neutral to heat check your opponent if they're going to run in. 
and the honorable mention is going to go to Steve Javin. Anytime we talk about Steve moves, it's going to be under the sense that he is using iron, and this move combos into itself. It's also going to be a kill confirm if you have certain moves. Not every character is going to be able to get a ton of utilization out of a Steve Jab, whereas every single character in the game would be able to get a ton of utilization out of a Chrom Jab, because every single character has an aerial that kills, and they would all be able to confirm into it. Next up is going to be dash attack, and the best dash attack in the game is going to go to Fox. And there's a couple dash attacks like this that work considered Meta Knight dash attack, Greninja dash attack, just these quick dash attacks that are really strong combos. But we ultimately went with Fox dash attack because not only is the sweet spot for the move very good, but the sour spot for the move is also incredible. When it gets to the higher percents, it's really hard to get that value out of Greninja and Meta Knight dash attack. But if you hit a sour spot Fox dash attack, you can combo it into pretty much anything you want. And I also want to give an honorable mention to Politana dash attack just because the move is fairly strong, but mainly the invincibility that it has on it. If you think your opponent is going to swing in the air, you just throw out that dash attack and you're going to win that trade every single time. But the combo potential of Fox Ash attack just has to be the best one. Next up is going to be F Tilt, and the best F Tilt in the game is going to go to Squirtle. This is the best tech chasing move in the entire game. By that, I mean setting up into a tech chase. The frame data on it is incredibly quick. You could just spam it over and over and over again. If it clips the opponent above like 60, 70%, they are going to be set into a tech scenario, and they have to react incredibly quick just because the angle on it sends you to the ground so fast. I want to give it an honorable mention to Charizard F Tilt as well, just because that move is ridiculously disjointed, and the sweet spot on it is so strong. It's an amazing move for two framing as well, but I wanted to give to Squirtle just because the pressure that he's able to create and neutral and mainly the tech chasing that he's able to get out of it is insane. You also got to give a big honorable mention to Min Min F Tilt and honestly Min Min forward air, Min Min back air, pretty much just all of the Min Min moves that are with her arms are going to be honorable mentions just because of how much space they control. Next up is going to be down tilt, and the best down tilt in the game is going to go to Rob, and it's pretty similar to Squirtle. Once this move starts setting up into a tech chase, it's a really strong tech chase move, but oftentimes you don't get that far because you can just combo Rob down tilt into Rob down tilt into Rob down tilt into a grab or whatever you want, really. Like, this move has so much combo potential, just scooting people across the stage. You can spam it with pretty much no risk. It's just very, very strong, and the honorable mention is going to go to Snake down tilt, and this may surprise some people, but that move is ridiculous. The hitbox on it is absolutely massive. It is a kill move once you get to the right percent, and Snake just low profile, so low to the ground that it's just such an amazing call-out tool or whiff punish tool. It's also incredibly quick for how big the hitbox on it is, but you got to give it to Rob down tilt just for how amazing it is to just kind of throw it in the neutral, and if you get hit you're probably gonna die the best up tilt in the game is gonna be steve up tilt this one pretty self-explanatory almost uncontested to be honest the fact that i can just up tilt you on shield over and over and over again and there's really nothing that you can do about it is ridiculous and it's also a combo tool into pretty much anything you want if you can combo steve up tilt into steve up smash you can combo steve up tilt into your imagination and the honorable mention is going to go to snake up tilt just because it's one of the best kill moves if not the best kill move honestly in the entire game the hitbox on it is massive the frame data is really solid and it just hits like a truck the sour spot on it is also going to be a kill but steve up tilt is like the best combo move in the game you gotta give it to him Moving on to Smash Attack, starting off with the F Smash, and the best F Smash in the game is definitely going to go to Steve. That move is literally a neutral tool, and again, this is considered with Iron F Smash, but even with that in mind, it is a very quick move that kills you extremely early, and I can just throw it out as a heat check. If I think you're going to run in, I'm going to throw out F Smash. If it doesn't hit, whatever. If it does hit, great. I killed you center stage at like 100%. It's just very, very strong, and you do definitely got to give an honorable mention to Min Min F Smash, just because that move is also absurd. It just covers so much stage it also kills incredibly early if you have the powered up dragon arm and when we're talking about the min min moves it's all going to be under the context of dragon arm just because i don't know how switching in a vacuum would work but even with ram ram being on the table i would still consider steve f smash to be the best just because you know riskless neutral tool that kills but min min's is also pretty broken Next up is Up Smash, and the best Up Smash in the game is going to go to Game & Watch, and it's for a pretty similar reason with Steve, it's just a neutral tool. I can just throw out Game & Watch Up Smash if I think you're going to run in, or if I think you're going to jump on me, and if you don't, whatever, that's fine. You'll see Meister do like six or seven Up Smashes in a row, not even moving, and it's optimal, because you just cannot contest that move. The hitbox on it isn't massive, but it is pretty much invincible. It's going to win every single trade, and even if it just trades, it's so strong that you're going to be losing that trade pretty much every single time, and these Smash attacks that you can throw out neutral are just clearly going to be the best ones, but you do got to give an honorable mention to Charizard up smash. It's incredibly quick. The hitbox on it is massive, so if you're under a platform, you're just going to get hit by it, and it also kills pretty early. And the final smash attack is going to be down smash, and that's once again going to go to Game & Watch. Now, you could make the arguments that Game & Watch down smash isn't a neutral tool, 
But the fact that the move buries and you can confirm it into really anything you want just means it's going to be killing you at like 50, 60%. It's just so strong. It hits on both sides as well, which is really nice. And even if you don't get the berry hitbox, the sour spot for the move is also very strong. Like you can get kills without the berry, but the berry is obviously the thing that takes it over the line. And you got to give an honorable mention to Ness down smash just because yo-yo at the ledge invalidates half of the cast, but Gamma Watch down smash invalidates the whole cast. Next up is going to be Grab, and the best Grab in the game is very clearly Pac-Man Grab because it is the only Grab in the game that you cannot spa dodge. Now, the move is a little bit slower. Yes, I am aware of that, but the main way to deal with Grabs, the hard counter to that move, does not work on Pac-Man Grab. Like, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory why it's the best. Moving on to the throws themselves, starting off with forward throw, and the best forward throw in the game is Donkey Kong, and I don't think I need to explain this one, so I'm not going to. It's just the best. Next up is going to be back throw, and the best back throw in the game is going to go to Ness. This move is just the strongest back throw in the game, so obviously it's going to be the one that we choose. And I'll mention to Incineroar's because it's the second strongest back throw in the game. Moving on to up throws, and the best up throw in the game is going to go to Charizard. The fact that this move lands you on a platform and can kill you 10, 20% earlier, depending on which one it lands you on, is pretty ridiculous. And even without that, the move is already incredibly strong. Now, the second best up throw in the game is going to go to Rob because it also has the benefits of landing on the platform. And while it's definitely not as strong as Charizard up throw, it is a throw that is going to start to kill. And at low percents, it's also a combo throw. And the final throw is going to be down throw. And the best down throw in the game is going to go to Snake. The fact that I could grab you and get a guaranteed check taste afterwards, where if you choose wrong, I either kill you if you're at the right percent or combo you if you're at the low percent, is just ridiculous to me. And the honorable mention is going to go to Dr. Mario down throw. There is a lot of down throws in this game that are just straight up for comboing. But I think Dr. Mario sends at the best angle. I mean, Dr. Mario is able to combo off of it. So most of the cast is going to be able to do so as well. And that's going to be the end of the throws. But I wanted to say, at the end of the throw segment that this is easily the most subjective part of the video just because if you heavily value combo throws your throw list is going to look a lot different than mine but personally i heavily heavily value kill throws just because when it comes to that late percent your shield is no longer safe it just becomes a way bigger threat so that's why pretty much all of my throws are kill throws and as i already mentioned the fact that i get a guaranteed check chase that also starts confirming into stuff at high enough percents with snakes is pretty ridiculous and before we wrap this video up, I want to show you all the visualization of the list that we have created. This is the best possible character in Smash Ultimate in a vacuum. Remember, that is very important. And there's also a bunch of stuff that isn't necessarily moves, but I also wanted to mention because we did it when we made this list on stream. The first one is going to be the mechanic, and the best mechanic in the game is going to be float. It makes you have the best micro spacing in the entire game, as well as giving you crazy combo potential. And you got to give an honorable mention to Ice Climbers just because having two of any character is ridiculous. Next up is going to be Yoshi. He just can't get shield pokes. So he's obviously going to have the best shield in the game. Double jump is also going to go to Yoshi just because he has the armor on the double jump. Very clearly the best one. Then you're going to have weight. Bowser the heaviest. Fairly self-explanatory. Run speed. Sonic is the fastest character in the game. So he's going to obviously be our choice. Walk speed is Lucina. Uh, for some reason, Lucina is the fastest walker in the game. So I guess good to her for that. You're going to have air speed. Yoshi has the best air speed in the game. Fox has the best full speed in the game. We're going to give you the jumps that Jigglypuff has. The best Zare in the game, in my opinion, is going to go into Lucas just because of the combo potential. But ZSS is also very good because of the dish the Ouija it's also good then you have the taunts with luigi's because it can kill greninja's hits kazuya hits the best crouch is actually going to be snake because of how low it low profiles but you got to give an honorable mention to Didi just because he's so smug when he does it the best get up attack is going to be bowser just because the hitbox on that move is ridiculous the best ledge roll is going to be weak fit uh, a weak fit player told me this don't ask me anymore the best hurt box is actually going to be kirby because he's surprisingly the smallest character in the game and the best ledge hang is going to be ganondorf and with that I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this sport. It's been absolutely unreal as of late. There's going to be a lot of disagreements in this video, which makes sense. But honestly, I think we did a pretty good job making this one. All I ask of you is that if you want to make a comment on this video, just be civil to the people that you're talking with. There's no reason to get angry about any of this stuff. Like, thank you all for everything. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.